Hey, what's up, guys? It's Jake aka Tag, and today we're back in again with a new and updated Executioner. The Executioner is now way more sturdy than it was before, but it packs way less of a punch, and it also has a much longer range. So it's way more sturdy against any miner that's trying to chip away on it or any spells that are thrown at it. This Hog Rider deck is one of the best Hog Rider cycle decks because no matter what, if your Hog Rider is not able to break through, you can always get damage with Rocket Log Cycle to finish off your opponents for sure. So let's go jump straight into some games and assert some dominance with this XE NATO Hog Cycle cycle deck. And if you guys aren't already, use code SIRTAG in the shop. It supports me by giving me a percentage of all money spent in the shop, and I really appreciate it. This guy's gonna go for Bandit, so it's probably gonna be P.E.K.K.A. Come on, baby, give me that P.E.K.K.A. deck. Very easy to beat if we play perfect, and I'm feeling pretty good here. Oh, no! What is this? Bandit plus Valkyrie? Oh, what is this? I am a little bit shell-shocked right now. I have no idea. In any event, we have to go in for that Executioner. And just wait and see what he's going to drop, man. I, I expect him to have like a wall breakers deck now. I could just straight up rocket this. I think that's probably the wave. Probably the wave. I think it gets a hit off on our executioner, unfortunately. But, oh, okay, dude. All right. We're to Valkyrie here. We might have Balloon. Oh, All right, I'm going to have to go in for Goblins to kill that. Goblins do kill the Bomber, which is really nice for me. And I think that the Giant Skeleton dies without getting any damage on us. So it's probably not worth doing anything there. Okay. This guy's got a crazy deck. He's got Bandit right now, which we can definitely just kite with a Hog Rider off his lane. But I need to save my Hog Rider. So watch this. If we're able to do this correctly, it's really clean. Sometimes it doesn't take any damage if you do it correctly, but I didn't do it correctly. But as you guys saw, the Hog Rider counters a Bandit and then it gets damage on the tower. That is one of the best plays you could ever do. If you play 2.6, that is the play that you want to be doing 99% of the time. So this man is going to be going in for that. We have to tornado it so it dies. And I think we're fine. Okay. Maybe we Valkyrie here. Uh, okay, that doesn't get death damage, but it's pretty close. It was really close. Okay. We're just going to Ice Spirit here. And one more stop. That would have been it. What do we want to do? Hog Rider? I think Hog Rider is the wave. Hog Rider plus Ice Spear on the left-hand side. That's going to be a lot of damage. And then we could rock it even. It seems like it's okay. Because I think the Valkyrie stays there. Oh, baby. Give me that damage. That was so scrumptious. I played that really clean, by the way. I calculated it, knowing that the Ice Spirit would keep it alive. I had, I had to pull the trigger on that one, Chief. That was very difficult to do. But very satisfying. I would have looked like an ass clown if uh, Chief patted that one like a, like a boss. You guys are rooting for a Chief Pat there. I know it. <laughs> you can't fool me. We we'll have to log this, so then we uh, hopefully can kill all this. I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of very annoying proponents to this deck. The Inferno Dragon and the double splash of the bomb, or the bomber and the Magic Archer just do so much damage. I think that this deck is not easy to play against in the slightest. If I had played this slightly worse, I think I would have just straight up like lost my tower in so many situations. I was playing with fire. But that's what you're doing when you play Control decks. You're playing against decks that you don't really uh, have a say in what happens. You have to defend all the time. We're just going to rocket everything because that's too much to pass up, my man. We can go for goblins. Go pull that back. And we need to wait. Probably log here. Going for Ice Spirit Hog Rider. If we get one hit, I think we win the game with a rocket. In fact, I, I think that this game is just over. Yeah, GG, man. Rocket log takes it, baby. So I just played super safe there, defending the virginity, making sure that he's never able to break through. And then I uh, finally cycled him out when I knew that I could guarantee take him out without him taking my tower. GG, well played and peace out. This guy just keeps spamming the laughing face, but you know he's crying in the inside. We're gonna go for an Ice Spirit here. We're gonna see what's up. We're gonna see what's good. This guy is gonna go in for a Battle Healer, so it's gonna be another Elixir Golden player. That's what we love to see. This is what I breathe for, beating these Elixir Golden players, sending them back to the Shadow Realm and making them feel incredibly disappointed with themselves for running this deck. Well, I feel like they, uh, they're long past that by now. They've played it a lot. So we can go for a rocket here. Hopefully we're going to be able to hit everything backward. And then the Ram Rider doesn't get a hit on the tower because the healer is not able to heal it up. So that was really clean. I'm super happy with this start. Able to hit a Ram Rider and a Battle Healer. That's a nice positive elixir trade if I've ever seen one. That's nine elixir for six, baby. And also, if you guys were wondering, in a lot of situations, I'll actually just rocket Ram Riders if I don't have like Ice Spirit plus Goblins or like Log plus Valkyrie or some great way of killing it because... It's actually really annoying when you don't have the proper cards in hand. I think that it's not an overpowered card, but it can be incredibly annoying if you have the wrong hand or the wrong cards in cycle. 
So I might have actually rocketed that depending on my card cycle there. So at this point in the game, I'm thinking that our best bet is to go in for a log and then knock that back so then we can just go in for a Valkyrie to finish everything off. Just getting that little bit of chip damage so we're able to finish off the Magic Archer and make sure everything's not in alignment with our tower. So that would have been really bad, man. I think uh, that log was pretty clean. So it's obvious that he could Ram Rider here, so I want to save enough Elixir. Okay, we're going to XE now and we're fine. For Ram Rider's opposite, we have Ice Spirit. We dropped that first before our Goblins. If you guys are wondering, the Ice Spirit doesn't actually die to the Ram Rider. And for that reason, it's really nice to drop first so the Goblins don't take that damage from the Ram Rider because the Ram Rider does do damage. Therefore, if you pull that interaction off nicely, guess what happens? The Ice Spirit takes the damage, the Goblins don't, then the Ice Spirit stuns the Ram Rider and you get a very nice kill on the Ram Rider. So that's uh, one of my favorite things to do. If you play it correctly, it works out brilliantly. So we're in a Valkyrie in the middle, so then it's the longest possible distance for that to travel. And I think we just rocket him out and take his tower here. So I, I don't know what he's gonna do. I'm just playing safe and steady right now. I say it called my Ice Spirit and my Goblins. So he could go for Ram Rider on the other side, we'll see. Um, if he does, I'll have to log it. Um, I don't really want to hog right now, but I think I kind of need to, to protect us from the Night Witch. I took a bit of damage, but I still think it's fine. He actually hasn't touched my tower yet, man. So hopefully we can pull this off and not let him touch the tower the entire game. He, he hasn't shown any capability of doing so. The Ram Rider plus uh, Healer is really obnoxious, but keep dropping our Executioner off to the side. Doesn't look like he's getting any damage anytime soon, man. So we're just going to go log this and walk away with a very clean W. No damage taken against the Ram Rider. Show that to Night Owl, baby. No damage on my tower whatsoever. Buff Ram Rider. Buff Ram Rider, guys. Let's get some hashtag buff Ram Riders. <laughs> Oh, Night Owl would be so triggered with me right now. All right, we got a game. We're going to sauce out a nice spirit, a hog rider, and goblins. Just make sure that thing does not get any damage on our tower here. And this man, whew, okay, buddy, you got the mini P.E.K.K.A. sauce. I wanted to keep my Valkyrie. I didn't want to drop it, but now I have to. So mini P.E.K.K.A. is going to be very annoying. I don't like playing against that card at all. So when I play mini P.E.K.K.A. into Hog Rider, I know that he can just shut it down with either an Ice Spirit or properly timed mini P.E.K.K.A. and I don't get any damage. So what I have to do is either have a Valkyrie in front or I just have to like spell cycle him out and when he cycles a Tesla like that, I'm just gonna log and get some early chip damage for free. So I could also Rocket here. I think that's also a pretty decent play because he's zapping, he's got Miner. Looks like he doesn't actually have any great way of chipping me out. If they're Miner Control, the best way that you can win these games is by activating King Tower early and then just like rocketing them out. So that's what we're gonna be doing here. The next miner that he drops is gonna get King Tower activated. And we're not really cycling our hog riders into mini pack up plus Tesla plays, because that's just not a really favorable thing for me to do. So I'm just gonna go and cycle my Valkyrie in the back. He's got Xe as well. So he's got NATO, he's got Tesla, he's got Val <laughs> Oh man. He's well, he's got his Valkyrie counters too with the mini pack, the Tesla, the executioner, it also counters our hog riders, so it's gonna be tough, man. Um, I think we log this just for some more chip. No, I'm not going to right now. It's going to be a dead mini P.E.K.K.A. anyway. Why would I do that to myself? Executioner is dead as well. We can Tornado here and then Rocket. I maybe should have Rocketed earlier so then I get back to it quicker. But yeah, this is how we play this matchup. If you get hard countered like crazy, you just treat it like a Rocket Cycle deck, guys. Like, there's no way for me to break through someone that has Executioner, Nato, Mini P.E.K.K.A. Minor Cycle. He undoubtedly does defend better than my win condition. So if I waste Elixir on it and I give him counter push with mini P.E.K.K.A.s that I then have to subsequently defend, it's just gonna be a miserable time. I could see myself like hog riding into a uh, Tesla and that's okay. I can even cycle an Executioner in the back because he has poison and no rocket, so no immediate way of killing this. But in most situations, we're uh, gonna be pretty miserable if uh, we ever have those type of interactions occur. So Valkyrie is gonna be pretty nice here. I could also alternatively just go in for a Log and then tornado this so he doesn't get any damage with it at all if I just ice spirit Okay, he's playing pretty wild man. He's actually playing pretty wild He's dropping way more at the river than I anticipated. He knows that he can't do anything besides spam the river So that's why he's doing it. So that miner is just gonna be dead I can just cycle a rocket because we know our executioner in tandem with our tower will take that out So it looks like he actually has matchup advantage, right? But in reality he doesn't he does hard counter our win condition of Hog Rider, so if we play it stupidly, we do lose. 
But if we play this intelligently and just rocket cycle, the game is effectively over. So that's why this deck just doesn't have too many terrible matchups. The ones that seem bad are not in reality very bad because you just don't break through with the Hog Rider, you rocket them out, you have splendid defensive capabilities with the Tornado, the Executioner, and the Valkyrie, and you walk away with very clean Ws. We got a game, guys. We're gonna sauce out of good luck and we're immediately gonna go in for Goblins. So this man is not cycling anything. He's gonna say thanks for the good luck. Oh, dude, cordial, sir. So we're gonna go for a Hog Rider run on top of that Electro. He's probably got P.E.K.K.A. I can't wait to play against P.E.K.K.A. because we got all the answers to the Bridge Bam. The uh, Sublime Sauce. I'm so happy because that even got a hit for us. So I can go for a Valkyrie and wait for that, and then I can Ice Spirit. I should have probably logged. Yeah, logging would have been better with a Valkyrie because uh, the Bandit wouldn't have dashed, and then uh, that Battle Ram wouldn't have connected. Um, I realized that as soon as the, the Battle Ram continued to go, so now I know. Now I know. If I Ice Spirit really early, it's fine, but I didn't. If I had Ice Spirit before I dropped the Valkyrie, that would have been a perfectly fine transaction. That didn't work that way. Hog is gonna die. But it's gonna get one hit, maybe two. If it gets two, I'm happy. Okay, we can just Valkyrie on top of everything here. Obviously, the bandit's not in range, but I don't want the Electro to get too much damage on us, so we're fine with that. Okay. Um, I think we just win this. I could be wrong, but I think we just win. Yep, especially if you do that. Thanks, buddy. Activating King Tower and also getting that. That was really funny. I can't believe he did that, man. He gave us so much value. Activating the King Tower, lining up the Magic Archer, and getting the Battle Rim there. That was pretty nice. So, Hawk Rider's coming through. He's going to be able to distract with the Goblins. And that is going to be so much damage with the Hog. So he's probably going to continue to spam here. I love playing against Pekadex for this reason, man. They just play so aggressive. We can just go Ice Spirit here. And then we can go in for a Valkyrie and we can kite everything. So the Pekka and also the Bandit. And then we can Executioner off to the side to go kill the Magic Archer. And then the Pekka is going to walk back and the Pekka doesn't even get a hit on the uh, Executioner. It's going to hit the Hog Rider instead. Oh, it actually did hit the Axie. That's really unfortunate. I thought we were going to keep it alive a little bit longer. So there's still a couple things that I could get better with this deck, but for the most part, my uh, interactions are pretty solid. As I said before, the best play that I could have done early was just deciding that I was going to log instead of dropping the Ice Spirit or dropping Ice Spirit earlier, but I didn't have Ice Spirit in cycle, so there's really no way that I could have. So it's important to do the other play, dropping the uh, log instead. I'm going to go Hog Rider and we're going to go for Goblins. The Goblins then again should uh, redirect the packet. It didn't happen this time, unfortunately, but it's because he zapped instead. So we could tornado everything, so then the Axie takes a bunch of damage here, and then maybe the uh, Electro dies as well. Awesome. So we can go for another Executioner, he might spam me. If he does, we have Hog Rider, we have Goblins, we have everything we could ever ask for. Okay, well, that's game. If you want to do that, we can also win this way. I'm totally fine with that, I'm 100% chilling, which is rocking you, buddy. So we're gonna Rocket Log, and then uh, just go drop Valkyrie, Goblins, and everything you could ever ask for, man. So this is really fun as well, because... Uh, Super easy defensive capabilities. And then uh, we can go for a Hog Rider if we really want to, but I think he's up enough Elixir to uh, do that. So I'm just going to go for a Log instead. And it doesn't really matter if a Bandit gets a dash because the Log does too much. GG, well played, and peace out, Girl Scout. Pleasure playing against you, man. Very cool Magic Archer activation early. We're going to Ice Spirit here. We're going to see what's up. This guy's got Ice Wizard. So when we see that, we're automatically assuming it's going to be that Graveyard with Bomb Tower or Tombstone Dagbox. Usually it has... A, I would assume it's going to be Bomb Tower. No matter what he has, he's always going to have Bomb Tower with Ice Wizard, right? It's not going to be Graveyard anymore after we see the Miner, but... Graveyard, here we come, man! Or, uh, <laughs> not Graveyard, Bomb Tower, here we come, man. Let's go for Xe, and then maybe we go in for a Hog Rider on the right. And he's going to have Magic Archer, so he's going to have uh, Miner Poison, Tornado, and Bomb Tower. So it's going to be a tough matchup. I only have a couple ways of winning this. That's getting early Hog Rider through, or just Rocket Cycling when I have the opportunity to. So what we're going to do right now is none other than Rocket Cycle, because I have to. Valkyrie run on top to kill the Magic Archer, so it doesn't pierce through and kill anything. Okay, how are we going to win this? Ice Spirit Goblins take a minimal amount of damage here. Kill the Miner without anything really happening for him. And this Hog Rider is not going to give us any value, guys. I could drop it right now just to go and kite the Valkyrie so we take less. I think that's a good play. 
just because we're going to take less damage than we bait out a bomb tower. So that's really clean. So it's four for four, but it's essentially a free trade on top of the Valkyrie that was going to get a hit on my tower. Actually, it would have gotten two hits, I think. So now we can start rocking at him still. I think this is the only way that you can beat someone that has, like, the best defensive capabilities possible with, like, Ice Lizard, Bomb Tower, Tornado. Yeah, that's just what I'm going to be doing here. I'm going to rock it again. Well, I didn't know he was going to drop an Ice Lizard behind the tower. I felt like that was just a bad play. Um, I, I didn't think that was something that he would ever consider. So he's going to try to poison me out, I guess. Or maybe he gave up in the game. I'm not sure. Not sure what's happening here. Anyway. I don't know, man. You can't out-poison my rocket. I can't. <laughs> you can't out-damage me, dude. It's not happening. I would assume that he's still trying, right? It's just a difficult thing for him to ever conceptualize, right? He needs to get miners and actual magic archers on my tower or something if he wants to win this. So he's logging, so we're going to go in for goblins with his hog rider and then ice spear because I think he overcommitted. Then he doesn't have lights for the bomb tower, so we're actually going to be able to break through. Yeah, we played that really well. So I realized, hey, he's going too hard. He just dropped a log. That's two elixir. He dropped a miner, and then he dropped poison. That's nine elixir. Well, if you drop nine elixir, even if it's double, you're not going to have elixir for the bomb tower, and you're going to lose the game. So he dropped it all at once. There's no way for him to replenish three elixir in an instant. So we effectively won the game just right off the bat, and it felt pretty good, man. GG, well played, and peace out, Girl Scout. Pleasure playing against you and asserting dominance. We're gonna Ice Beard Hogger out of here. We're gonna see what's up. We're gonna see what's good. This guy's just gonna go him right out of the gate. I love to see it, dude. That is what I live for. The Golem players, they just drop it right at the river or in the back at the start of the game. It's so insane to see it, dude. In any event, I don't feel comfortable going in for anything on the other side, like cycling goblins there, because we don't know how hard he's gonna spam me with this Golem. So I need to go in for a tornado here to activate the King Tower. And the weird thing is, guys, you can activate King Tower so easily against Golem. It is so nice for a plus five elixir trade. You just shatter that Golem, shut it down, snack and a half. Even if he lightnings, it doesn't matter because your executioner is still alive. And then you know what happens? You punish him, you spank him, you drop the Hog Rider, you drop the Ice Spirit, and you still have the XC, so then he can't do anything about it. No Squishy Bait card is ever going to come down on us with any type of value. Look at that, man. He has to drop arrows with this goblin gang that feels brutal to him i also might have been slightly better off just dropping a valkyrie at the river because you know what if he decides to do a goblin gang and arrows and drop six elixir he might not have elixir to stop the valkyrie that valkyrie might just take his tower i don't know man that depending on his deck that valkyrie at the river might have been a better play so he's just going to go in for a golem again we already know that he's probably going to lightning me because that's what he did before. So if we drop a very high Executioner, it's not actually able to be Lightning. And what I could do is just chill. I could hard chill and go in for a Tornado here. And then Ice Spirit. And we're going to be able to kill that without it doing any damage to our tower without him Lightning me. So this is going to be funny because it's going to continue to spam. And we just cycle back to another Valkyrie. Nothing really works for him. I could have also pulled it for a Hog Rider to pull everything back a little bit further, but... I'd rather be safe than sorry in case he's got Bandit or something else crazy. We know he's got Goblin Gang, so we're going to wait. I know that he might Lightning this Executioner, so I expect him to, actually. Let's go for a Hog Rider up top so he can't hit it. Um, oh, I thought he would try to Lightning. He didn't do it. I'm a little bit disappointed in you, Sire. We'll just go in for a Log, kill that Goblin Gang, make sure that you don't get any damage. And then you have to deal with a Executioner that is actually getting pushed back by your Golem. You have to Lightning it to kill it, but you don't want to because it's at a miserable amount of hit points. <laughs> and he's gonna arrows, and uh, that's a three elixir investment to kill a one HP unit. So this is a really good time to be me. We can just ice spirit so that none of the bats lock onto the tower. Sometimes the executioner has very funky targeting. And wow, all right, dude, you're so wild. You're absolutely insane. We can go in for a tornado, and you're probably gonna go for a lightning arrows. And if you do that, then you don't have elixir to defend against the hog rider. So we're making you guess, or not guess. We're making you pick. What do you want to do, man? You're given the opportunity to defend and then lose the game, or <laughs> Uh, just lose the game straight up to a hog rider. He decides to defend and then lose the game. So we go in for another executioner. We got double executioners on the map. Can we get the three ex executeers? Oh man, I stuttered even saying that because it was so incredibly crazy. I don't even know, man. My mind wasn't even able to fa fathom it. I wasn't able to comprehend the level of skill the three executeers put out on the map. Wow. Never been exhibited before in Clash Royale. We can just go in for another set of goblins, go in for a log. 
by dropping our Hog Rider here. His Night Witch isn't able to lock on to anything. We're cycling our Tornado. He's logging. No, he's not even going to log or drop anything. Okay, we can just peace out Girl Scout and win the game. Pleasure playing against you, my man.